In this video, I will explain what a residual block is. So say we have an input image that has certain dimensions, let's say 256 by 256, and let's say it has certain number of channels, say three channels. Um, now this can be squeezed or expanded into an input volume, say for example, of dimensions 28 by 28 by three, ready to feed into a deep learning model. And now say this image feeds into a, a convolutional layer, one convolutional layer, and let's say this is the output of the convolutional layer. So say we have 64 filters, each of size, let's say three by three filter, and we apply same padding, that means the dimensions 28 by 28 are going to be maintained. So this comes up, so this applying convolution gives us an output that has 28 by 28 by 64 because we have applied 64 filters, right? Then we apply the ReLU activation on these inputs, maintains the dimensions, right? And then we call this one convolutional layer. So this is pretty common as we have been seeing convolutional um, layers, right? The next thing we can do is um, add another convolutional layer now, once again, what we do this time is actually um, apply three filters of size uh, three by three each uh, and applying the same padding. Uh, we get 28 by 28 by three output and then we apply a ReLU activation. This again maintains the 128 by 128 by three output. So given a 128 by 128 by three input image all the way passing through these two convolutions, what we get is finally another one to, one of the 28 by 28 by three output. Now what we can actually do is take this 28 by 28 by three input and take it all the way down and pass it as input and add it with this output to which is 28 by 28 by three. So in other words, we have two volumes. One is, so this is the first input volume we have um, at the input. This is the first input volume. And then we have another input volume, two, which is the output of two convolutions. Now we can add these two together to obtain another 28 by 28 by three, because we, uh, we add these um, uh, element-wise and then we get that output. So basically, what, what's happening here is this connection that goes from the beginning to the end to add x as a shortcut in this uh, in this flow of information now one obvious question that that we may have in mind is can we add after the first relu in other words this output that we had after the first convolution can we add our input to this and the answer is a no and the reason is that while this input is 28 by 28 by three, this is actually 28 by 28 by 64. So we cannot add these two volumes pairwise. So for that reason, residual networks only work when your input that you're feeding to the convolutional part of the residual block um, is same as the output of the, the convolution operations that we are doing. Also for that reason, oftentimes it's very common to pass your input, your input image, through a convolution, maybe one conv2d layer, conv2d layer, um, with maybe 64 filters, and then start your, conv your, your residual connections after that, because then after that you don't have to, like you later squeeze your convolutions back into smaller um, channels um, like the ones we had here. Now this residual block that we saw where, so this entire thing is actually one residual block where here's the shortcut and here's the convolutional, the, the uh, information flow through a convolutional layer. Now oftentimes such a residual block is also represented um, using block diagrams that look like this. So we have this input volume, input image or input volume or whatever we have of certain dimensions like 256 by 256 by N, which is usually represented using this XL. And then this one entire thing is one residual block, one residual block. 
and this goes through say for example batch normalization relu activation and then convolution layer another batch normalization relu and conv2d or conv3d or whatever convolution we are applying so basically these are two convolutions as we can see one convolution and two convolution and what con comes out of this convolution gets added to the original input xl to give you the output for the next residual block now let's talk about um, how to implement the residual block in Keras. Uh, now let's look at a fully convolutional neural network. So when we say fully convolutional, also known as FCN, a fully convolutional network is the one in which here's your input, right in the first layer, um, the, your input passes to the CONV2D, what comes out is this layer A, and then we feed this A back into another layer, Conv2D, the output goes to B, and then B feeds back into another conv layer, comes out at C. So it's it's just a stacking of convolutions. In a residual connection, what happens is here's your input. The way we can implement a residual connection is here's our input. This passes to the conv2D, comes out as A. And this goes as um, as one of the inputs to the add function, and then we also pass the input here so that we can add these to the output of the convolution a and then the original input this input and, and it, it can be sent to or saved to a new variable b then in the next convolutional block once again i can feed in this b apply convolution what comes out is a c and then i can add c and b again so b is the original input and c is the output of this convolution send it to d and in this fashion i can repeatedly you know create a, a stack of residual blocks and this becomes a residual uh, neural network now obviously if we are building very deep residual networks then um, uh, this way of manually adding residual layers isn't a great idea so we can write a for loop um, say, for example, we would like to write a for loop to create a residual network that has, let's say, 32 blocks. So the way to do this would be we can start, let's say, for uh, maybe 32 times, right? Um, I can simply do, let's say, my input is, uh, let's say, this is my input. And what I would like to do is x equals, let's say, conv2d. And then let me apply 64 filters to it and then pass this input here. Um, so my x is now ready to go as input. So I can do y equals conv2d and then pass x as input. So there are other parameters here as well, but basically x is going as input to this conv2d and coming out as y. And then I can obviously add um, this y and x, y plus x, and then I can actually send it back to x. So this way, in the for loop, what happens is x comes in as input, it goes through the conv2d, it comes out as y, y gets added with x, the sum actually goes back to x again, and then this loop repeats 32 times, giving you the convolutional, uh, sorry, residual block of 32, residual network of 32 blocks. In the same lecture, in this lecture, I already touched on this before, but in this slide, what I would like to do is clarify that in a residual block, we add tensors of same shape. That is, say we have an input image that is, let's say, has three channels, and we would like to apply 16 filters to it to obtain an output that also had 16 uh, channels in it. Then we cannot add the input image to this. So these cannot be added. In other words, a residual, uh, like the connections cannot be applied. So how do we apply residual connections if we want. Um, so what we can do is take this input image and then uh, apply, uh, let's say, conv2d layer, let's say conv2d layer, and obtain an output uh, that has 16 channels in it. So I can apply conv2d, obtain 16 channels, and then now I can repeatedly apply, um, I can build residual blocks because then I can apply uh, the first convolution, obtain 16 channel output, and then I can add the 16 channel volume activation with, uh, sorry, 16 channel volume with this 16 channel activation. So anytime 
we have an input image, you will see that residual blocks are not added right away. You will see at least one Conv2D layer added um, to create, in a way, uh, to create the input for the subsequent uh, residual blocks.